In this video, I want to take a look at a feature that was added in Studio One, and that is sync points. Now, I know these have been out for a while, but it's something I haven't covered, so I wanted to take a look at this and also talk about the two different shortcuts, when you might want to use one over the other, and why they're useful. Okay, so what we are looking at here is when I was mixing this track, I remember hearing this section that happened at the very beginning and thinking, that's a really cool cymbal swell. I would love to sample that. Now, it has a little bit of reverb on it, and I've done an edit here. What we had originally was, let me just peel this back. If I bring this all the way back and peel these guys back over here. This is what we had originally, where we have some stereo placement, and also it went into an actual pattern. Okay, but I thought to myself, that'd be really cool to make that into a sample. So basically just snip this back a little bit, did a little bit of leveling out. I could level this off even further if I wanted to. And then basically it just set a print track that listened to this bus. And this bus is just for the overheads. And then I recorded this. So we have this now as an audio file. We can listen to this, make sure that this is soloed and we'll listen. Now I also did an edit because if I was to use this as an effect, I would probably most likely put reverb on it or something. So that tail would get extended. So now when it comes to sync points, we right click an audio event and we choose the sync point option. You might be thinking, okay, well, where is the sync point or how do I use this? Every single audio event, as long as it's separated by default, any audio event that you enable will have a sync point at the very beginning. This one, if I enable it over here, there is sync points here. You just have to zoom in. See this right over here? I can pull this back. If you take a look at this one, it's the same thing. I can click, hold, and drag it and pull it back. So there's not much you have to do except for enabling the visibility factor of it. Now, in terms of positioning this, there's a couple different approaches we can take. One would be just simply, and this would probably be the easiest, is just click, holding, and dragging. And then the idea would be that you want to kind of line up the apex of the information right at a point that you think to yourself visually, I think that's where the strongest energy was, and it would make sense if that was the downbeat. Now, in addition to being able to just click, hold, and drag things, and I would recommend probably doing this without the snapping on, but we also have two key commands that we can work with. So let's go to our keyboard shortcuts, and I'm going to type in sync. Over here, you see we have set sync point to cursor, and set sync point to mouse cursor. Let's talk about when you might wanna use either one of these. Okay, well, if I was to simply click anywhere, like visually I had a range tool and I clicked here, I could say to myself, okay, that looks like an area where I might wanna have a sync point. Then we can fire off the key command to set the sync point to cursor. Now, when we do that, it sets the sync point exactly where your cursor was. Now, the other one was set sync point based on mouse cursor. So this one's a little bit different. If I was zooming in here and I just was kind of going by with my mouse and I said to myself, okay, you know what? That over there looks like it might be a good place to put a sync point. In that case, we can fire off the key command to set the sync point to your mouse cursor. So you don't necessarily have to click the cursor to park it out of position. You could just do this aligning visually by eye or maybe you're zoomed in super close and you wanted to find a really specific point and you say right there, I haven't clicked this yet. This is just my mouse cursor is hovering there. I could set the sync point based on that position. Now, once you have these sync points set, then basically it's just a case of making sure that you have the snapping enabled and then I can basically just move these anywhere. And because the sync point was set over here, it's going to respect this as if though it was an event boundary. It will almost be seen as if though it was like this, where I'm moving an actual event that has nothing preceding it. So that is one thing. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is maybe some tips, especially if you're new to reading waveforms or you're just maybe having some issues in terms of being able to visually hear and or, or here and also visually see where you should place a sync point. This might not be the best audio example to show this, but I want to show it regardless. If we open up the audio bend menu, and if we set this to standard and we detect the transients, Studio One will do a transient detection and we can increase or decrease this based upon how sensitive we want this to be to specific things that Studio One could add bend markers to. I'm going to dial this up a little bit so we have a couple different choices. And now I'm going to hide this. The sync points are there. They're just not visible anymore. Or rather, the audio bend markers are there. They're just not visible. Now, if we go back to the audio file, if I'm tabbing, 
I'm actually tabbing through all the different bend markers. So if we right click and we show these bend markers, take a look at what's happening with my cursor. The tab key is allowing me to tab to these bend markers. Now, I think that this one over here was pretty good in terms of where Studio One placed a bend marker. I think this, either one of these represent an apex of energy, or I could go to the next one. So like I said, either one of them. Now in this case, because I've placed my cursor somewhere and I did this by tabbing right like that, I would just fire off that first key command, which places my cursor exactly at that point. So if you need some help in terms of determining where you should put a sync point, maybe analyze the transients, allow some bend markers to be there, then use the tab key. And then at that point, it's just a matter of testing. Just tab, play. Okay, maybe not there. Nope, they're not there. What about this? No, I want it closer to the apex. That's not bad. There, that's the one I want. And then you just fire off a key command. So that is working with sync points in Studio One and a couple tips with respect to how to work with them. They're a really, really useful feature. And once you kind of get used to working with them, especially for things like risers or transitions or anything like that, you really wonder how you got on without them. Now, the last thing I would do here, probably just look for a reverb of some sort. I'll probably add this as an event effect on the actual event, set my mix to 50%, and then we end up with something really nice. Right? So this is more of an organic feel or something like that. I'd probably do this more on something that's electronic, but you get the idea. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.